in regards to insecurities, the, the primary aspects that, that we focus on relate to insecurities with identity, with our relationships, with our family, sexuality, and spirituality. And so we, we only focus within those five realms. And so what we end up doing is same thing, going through that empowerment process, but honing in specifically on what the individual expresses. So if, for instance, one of my main insecurities was my identity. I didn't really know where I fit in, and so I had to begin to say, okay, well, who, who am I? Well, being a spiritual being, it wasn't who am I, it was whose am I? When I realized that, okay, I am God's daughter, what are the characteristics, what are the qualities of that? That's how I began to live my life, with my perspective began to change. Once I tapped in and I said, you know what, I will give my life to God, whatever that looks like, I don't know and I'm kind of scared. At that moment, that's when the other elements began to reveal themselves, I, that when I was battling with my relationships. Well, you can be a best, best friend, but there's times where I need to release to people. Who's going to be that outlet for me? I didn't even think about that because I was battling with my identity first and foremost, right? So rather than breaking all of these things down, it was, it was more of a tear that before I can address the spiritual, spirituality on a deeper level, I had to first hone in on some of these other components. I would just ask her why and just let her, and I wouldn't say anything until she answered the why question. And I've actually talked to, to two young women, well, one young, young younger woman probably, Four, 13, 14 years old, similar scenario, and then a 30, I think a 32, 33 year old woman, similar scenario. I, I would never leave the house. I'm like, okay, why? And they gave this whole story. Well, you know, because my mama did this and she looks like this and then these magazines, I'm just like, that's a lot of other people. That's outside influence, that's interesting. But you, why are you not willing? Why are you not comfortable? So this why is ambiguous. It's this why you can answer it in any way, but that why, when we're talking about you, you have to hone in on what you, your reason for not going outside of the house with the makeup on or why you feel that that makeup defines you in that way. The distinctiveness, which is the fourth phase of the empowerment process, we, whole, we, we wholeheartedly believe that, that we're all created distinctively set apart from everyone else. So specifically for women, what we see is that women, women try and compete with other women and they try and get things that, that, number one, don't belong to them or that somebody else has. So rather than trying to work for that, function in your purpose, function in your gifts. So we, we just had a group last weekend and um, we call this group called Sisterhood Sensation. And in this group, one of the main focuses that we, we discussed was our gifts, our talents versus our purpose. And so we went around the room and we started pointing out our gifts. Oh, I sing well, or I, I, I do art, or whatever, I write, blah. And so we went through all these things. I said, okay, did anybody in here hear a similar gift? Well, yeah, I did. Okay. How do you draw? And how do you draw the same? Well, we don't. Right. So both of you may become artists in the future. That may be purpose for both of you, but you guys are two completely different people. So whenever we do the group settings, it always it happens to present itself because there's, there's multiple people. We, we've been gifted with, with similar traits or similar aspects or qualities, but they're completely unique to us. And so we tap into who have you been called to be? Who have you been called to serve? And what does that look like when you begin to walk in that purpose? From the beginning, whether it's a coaching session or, or at the workshop conference, what have you, we say from the beginning, this is up to you. I can share what I share, but it's up to you to receive what it is that you feel you need to take the next step. Okay, so we have this process called the empowerment process, and it's four specific phases. Visualization, willingness, accountability, and distinctiveness. Without those four phases, again, we, we, we share that, we, we present them, that information to the individual so they're fully aware of what those four phases look like and it's up to the individual. We just share the information. We don't fight them, it's just, it's up to you. You are in the season of your life. You know what it is that you're battling with. And we just say, okay, we're here when you need to. As a life coach, we're not, we're not counselors, we're not therapists, psych psychiatrists, none of those things. We are coaches and coaches help the individual when they show up and say, hey, here's my skills. This is, this is what I'm coming to you with. This is what I bring to the table. Help me enhance my skills. That's what we do. Thank you for watching A Wise Way. Subscribe to stay updated, share to pass the knowledge, or view our other videos on the left.